Hey campfire viewers, it's good to see you. And as you can see, I got my happy camper hat on, but today it's not a happy camper day. Today, it is a maintenance day. So today, I'm gonna show you how to change the oil in this bad boy um, <clears throat> Winnebago Brave. Now what I have here is a 8.1 liter Chevy engine with an Allison transmission. That uh, combination was put in numerous pickup trucks and other vehicles by Chevy as well as in some of their workhorse uh, chassis. Uh, so we're going to change the oil today. The reason I'm going to do the oil change myself today is that I hope that you'll be inspired to maybe uh, think about changing your own oil in whatever vehicle you have, but especially if you have one of these. I've, if you go online, you'll find some articles out there that claim that oil changes are 80 to to $100. Well, I'll tell you, that is not real world prices. Uh, I personally have been quoted anywhere from $160 to almost $400 to get the oil changed in this motorhome. And yet it's nothing more than an 8.1 liter Chevy engine that is found in a pickup truck. Uh, the total cost of, uh, of the, uh, for the oil change is going to be a, just about forty dollars. That's it. So we're going to try out. We're going to save you some money this week. So stay tuned and see how we do this. Okay, camp for our viewers. So here we've got. Uh, Looks like all the tools we're going to need to do this. Um, you don't need to necessarily have everything I've got here, but uh, certainly would help helpful to you. Uh, I've got a creeper for getting underneath the motorhome here. I've got my oil catcher. One thing I will caution you, this particular vehicle takes seven quarts of oil. So check your owner's manual, find out how many quarts it will be, and make sure you've got a container big enough to hold it because you're going to have a big mess if you don't. Okay, also grab your owner's manual. Yes, I know guys, you don't uh, like owner's manuals and reading directions, but in this case it's uh, best that you do because in it you will have what oil that you're supposed to use. Now, here, as you can see, it uh, tells me You have to excuse me, it's a windy day today. Here you can see it tells me that I can use either uh, 5 weight 30 or I can use 10 30 and nothing else. I can use regular oil or I can use uh, synthetic oil. I'm actually going to use this uh, 5 weight 30 uh, synthetic blend and I'm going to also use this AC Delco filter. This particular one is a PF1218. It will fit a 8.1 liter workhorse. There's actually two sizes for this workhorse. One is a, a half quart, and there is also a full quart one. This is the full quart one. Um, I'm not going with the bigger filter so that I can last longer between an oil change. I will still do an oil change at 3,000 miles. I just want the increased um, filtering capacity for this motorhome, especially when you're towing, it's working hard going up hills and that type of thing. So, a couple of other things you'll need is a wrench to take off the plug, the drain plug. This happens to be a uh, 15 millimeter. You may have to crawl underneath and experiment, see which size. Uh, one thing I do recommend do not use a crescent wrench. You only have to round off that nut bolt and you've got an issue. So don't use a crushing wrench. Either use a, a box end or closed end or, or just don't use a crescent. I wouldn't recommend it. The other thing is, is you're going to need something to take the old oil filter off and just snug up the new one. Uh, this is what I've got. Uh, there's kind of a lot of ways to do it. If you don't have uh, a, uh, a specific oil filter removal tool, then you might want to just grab a big pair of channel locks, snug it, get it off. Most of the time, if you've had your uh, vehicle serviced in a place like a Walmart or whatever, um, then a lot of times they will put it on way too tight. So we, uh, and so you'll need something to get it off. Okay, so we're underneath right now. 
And I want to give you a little bit of a lesson here. So back here, you have the drive shaft right here. Now this is connected to the transmission. So here we go. This is the transmission pan. You see a bolt right there? Do not touch that. This flat pan is the transmission pan. Your pan is going to be up here. It's going to be up there where the engine is. You see where that uh, nut is right there? Okay, so that is the oil. Now a lot of times, they're all in a lot of vehicles, they're very much the same. As you can see, it kind of is flat up there. Up there is flat, comes over, comes down to this belly here, and then has a nut on the back side. I've had many, many cars, motorhomes over the years. I have not seen the bolt in any other place than on the back side corner, middle, but it's always on the back side of these uh, oil pans. So that's going to be your oil pan. Now the filter for this one is actually right there. There's the filter. I had previously used the Wix uh, one quart filter. Decided to go with AC Delco this time. Uh, purely price reason, that's all. So, okay, campfire friends. First of all, what we're gonna do is we are going to loosen this nut. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, there we go. I got it loose. Now, one of the problems that I have on this unit is this bar right here. When that comes out, a lot of times I'll hit this bar, splash and get in the way, and end up getting all over and getting a mess. So what I'm going to do, you may not have that bar, it just depends, because this bar is connected to my hydraulic system for the leveling of the uh, motorhome. If you have a different kind of system, you may not have that bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this funnel here, and I'm going to let the nut drop into the funnel. It's small enough it won't be able to, so I'm going to avoid getting all that oil all over that brace, at least on the initial piece. So. So there you go, we can let that run out a little bit here. And once it kind of calms down, I'll just be able to take the uh, funnel away. And we can just let it run out. A lot of times the initial burst will come over and we just there and it'll create a mess. So this way you don't get a lot of mess. So we're gonna let that drain out and then we'll move on to the oil filter but we need this tray hey campfire friends how you doing so we're down to now where the oil is just basically dripping out i've got the uh, oil plug here i've wiped it off i've checked that little gasket there the rubber one everything seems to be in order i don't see any damage to it to create a leak so we're going to put this back on so I'm just gonna wipe the face off, rip off, pull that off a little bit, and then just put that back in, like so. There you go, just wipe the drip off. Now we're going to just take our wrench and snug it down. Just like that. Do not, do not crank on it. A lot of times on these um, uh, oil pans, they have threaded inserts. If you go cranking on it, you can strip out that insert. Just tightly snug it up. That will be enough. The reason that I know that is the fact that one time I had one of these big box stores change the oil on my Jeep, they used a, a tool 
crank down the uh, the uh, oil pan and it had an aluminum thread in it and they stripped it out and they ended up having to replace it and so I went decided from that point on I was changing my own oil so and that's why I do and the money aspect so so that's now done now let's go on over to the oil filter okay so before we put the filter on I want to uh, uh, point out something on these filters right here you have a rubber gasket what you need to do before you put the filter on is take your oil go ahead open her up and then stick your finger in it get some of that nice new clean oil on your glove finger and put it on that gasket like so okay now what that will do is it will make sure that this nice brand new rubber gasket that you got on here as you screw it on doesn't catch on the metal or something and buckle and uh, have the potential for an oil leak at that point in which case then you'll end up having to take this off put a brand new one on and uh, waste all the oil that you just put in here so make sure you do that then that way it'll slide on also when you're tightening it up that'll add lubrication so you can know that you fully tightened it up the rubber just didn't catch and you thought that you tightened it up so there you go a little tip for you Make sure you put some fresh oil on it. So we're going back underneath to put this baby on. See you there. Okay guys, or gals, here we go. So now we're going to take the oil filter off. So first of all, let's see if we can do it by hand. A lot of times the, uh, if you haven't done it, at places they do it really tight, but I did this myself. There we go, I can actually unscrew it by hand with my rubber gloves. That's how it should be. They shouldn't be so tight that you can't undo them. Okay, now once you've loosened it here, as I warned you before, this is going to be full of oil. So what I recommend you do, grab yourself some kitchen towel, now that you've loosened it a little bit. Okay. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to grab it with the kitchen towel like so and I'm going to start pushing it off like so and then we'll try to catch whatever we can and that oil comes out into that kitchen towel there she goes, she comes loose, take it straight down straight down into your pan and then just tip it over there you go and grab yourself another one you can clean, just wipe off the face of it, like so. There you go. That's that. So, now we're going to move along to the putting, reinstalling the uh, oil filter. Take your hands and just crank that thing on, like so. And then you should be able to, since you're wearing rubber gloves, get it a good old tight screw on like so. And if you want to, you can go ahead and grab your pliers like so. Okay, that's good enough. We don't need to do any more. That's why they put a rubber gasket on, seal it up. So we've drained it. We changed the oil filter. Now we know it needs to go to the front and put the new oil in. So let's see what the front. Okay, campfire friends, we're going to put the oil in. But there's one more thing I wanted to uh, point out. Okay, so you can obviously go to your owner's manual. Here's mine. There it is. And on this page right here, it tells me the size of my engine and tells me how many quarts that I should be able to get in. As you can see, 
an 8 liter V8. It's a Chevy. It's a 6.4. Uh, so we're going to start off by putting 6 in it. We'll start her up and then we will uh, let it settle and we'll check. Chances are I'm going to have to put 7 in because I have increased the capacity of the oil filter by a half a quart. The normal standard oil filter for this is a half quart oil filter. I've gone up to one. So I suspect I'll be closer to seven. So, but check your manual, see what you need to put in. Start off with the six quarts is, uh, and we'll take it from there, okay? I'm gonna start off by putting in uh, four quarts of oil. So there you go, nice and easy. I got a funnel so it wouldn't get it everywhere. And here we are almost down to the last little bit. There you go. Yeah, so that's uh, five quarts right there. I know it's five quarts because that's what it tells me on the front, five quarts. So we're going to take the other bottle and we're going to put in another one quart. Here's the bottle here. And uh, Right here on this back spine, this uh, is actually see-through, and you can see the oil inside of it. They've also got graduation marks right here. So here's one quart, two quarts, three quarts, four quarts, and it's full at five. So we're going to come down here to the to the four quart level, and then I'm going to start the engine up, and we're going to let it run through, let it settle. We'll check the dipstick, make sure it's. Uh, at least between the lines and we'll if it not uh, or if it's a little low we'll put a little more in and then we'll call it good so let's carry on okay okay so um put the oil in and uh i had to put a little bit more in so now we're good we'll go ahead and put the uh 710 cap on <laughs> I never get to all that joke. Anyway, the oil cap. We go ahead and check the oil. Here we go. And this uh, dipstick, oil dipstick, just keeps going and going and going and going. It's like the longest one I've ever owned in my life. So I don't know if you can see that. There it is, the three holes. The oil is right on top of there, uh, right here. It's full. Now. I will tell you that you don't need to shoot for full between here and here, especially this one and this one. That's called operating range, okay? So that's where, when the oil is cold, it'll be down here. When it's hot, it can be up here. And this is full. And uh, it's a hot day. I'm on a slight slope. Uh, is, be careful because you don't want to overfill it. Overfilling is bad too. So if you're in this operating range, that's going to be fine. Drive it and then uh, check when you get your gasoline. Make sure it hasn't dropped as it's worked its way through all of the different channels in the engine. And if you need to uh, give it a little bit more. But uh, here we go. There you go. That's done. Filled up. And we are ready to... Move on. Okay, campfire friends, I hope you found that useful. Um, whether you got a motorhome, a car, a pickup truck, hopefully that gives you some pointers on how you can change your oil yourself. These days we're raising uh, fuel costs, oil costs, food costs. I mean, everything's going up except for our wages, it seems. Um, I'm hoping that uh, this might be a blessing to your family. You can save a little bit of money and use the money for something you enjoy. So wherever you are in the world, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And remember, life's better around the campfire.